All right, man, peace. So, brothers, over the course of this current NBA season, I've been pretty transparent with some of the sentiments that I've touched on, particularly in regards to the Golden State Warriors and my belief that they will be facing some adversity when the playoffs come. Now, I could be wrong because they've been known to take their game up to a whole other level in the playoffs, especially defensively. But from what I've seen from them, especially in many of their more higher profile matchups, particularly against Eastern Conference teams like the Milwaukee Bucks, the Toronto Raptors, even the Boston Celtics, you know, because they won that game in Boston, but they have another matchup with them coming. I think that they're going to be pushed. I think that they're going to need all hands on deck for the rest of this season going into the playoffs. And I do believe that, they're, that there's going to be at least one series where they're pushed to seven games, where they're pushed to the brink, maybe even more than one. We'll find out. Max Kellerman has decided that he's going to put forth a certain notion in regards to the Golden State Warriors that other people have broached in the past. Basically, that they're bullies, that they're front runners as well. That when the chips are stacked in their favor, that's when they have all the swag. But when it's time for them to reach down into the depths and come back, they can't do it. That's the notion that he's putting forth. I keep things in perspective. So I say to myself, they can't just be front runners because we saw what they did in 2016 against the Oklahoma City Thunder. We've seen the Warriors in positions where they were down. In 2015, they were down two games to one to the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Memphis Grizzlies. So we have to take those things into account. But oftentimes when you have, when you have a multitude of talent, people try to pick little holes in, in your shield. They, have, they try to pick holes in your armor. They try to find chinks in your armor. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Team, I'll say this about Draymond. The feeling I've always gotten from Golden State was front runners. I always felt like, like when Kyrie and LeBron went into Oracle, it was two guys with real belief in themselves against a bunch of guys who didn't really show up until they felt like they had it. We've all experienced this. Let me say this very quickly. It's very obvious, as I've stated in the past, that Max Kellerman is a very big LeBron James fanboy. And it would not surprise me if he's on LeBron James's payroll. It truly wouldn't. I mean, because there are certain analysts <laughs> that go above and beyond in protecting LeBron James and trying to exalt many of his exploits. In Game 5 of the 2016 Finals between the Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers, when the Cavaliers came back into Oracle when they were down 3-1, I knew that the Warriors were in trouble already when they didn't have Draymond. And I said to myself, if they don't close out the Cavaliers right here, this series is going to go seven games because I didn't see them winning a game six in Cleveland, not with the way in which Steph Curry was playing. That was by far the worst series that I've ever seen him play, playoff series wise. Those 2016 finals. He had no rhythm whatsoever. As a matter of fact, he had very little offensive rhythm for that entire playoff run. Because from game one against the Rockets when he hurt his ankle and then came back and hyperextended his knee. From the time that he came back against the Portland Trail Blazers, he got hot, I believe it was game four in Portland, where he scored some like 15 points or 18 points in a five minute overtime. He broke some type of playoff record. He was never right for the rest of the playoffs. Against the OKC Thunder, he had a couple of good games, especially when they started their comeback trail. Games five, six, and seven, he was very good. Klay Thompson, of course, was unbelievable in game six. When they reached the finals against Cleveland, he was terrible. Even in the first two games they won in Oracle, he was terrible. Game three, it seemed as if Curry was in some type of fog or haze, maybe psychologically induced. Who knows? Either way, in game four, he was very good. Still wasn't great. Game five, he was terrible. Game six, he tried, but the refs, <laughs> the refs were not going to allow him to take over that game. Golden State was down like 27 points by the second quarter. And they were trying to fight their way back. And the refs knew what was going on. And they wanted to make sure that they helped out their booth thing, LeBron James, get to a game seven. And then let the chips fall where they may. So with all those factors going against Golden State, that's what gave LeBron James and Kyrie the confidence that they needed. And they still needed a Kyrie Irving game-winning three-point shot with about 15 seconds left to win the game. When like whether it's a team, whether it's a situation in your life, when people feel like they have numbers, when they when they really can't get touched because they have numbers, then they get very brave, and that's the feeling I got from Golden State. Finally, when KD joined, of course they're gonna wipe the floor of everyone. The one dude on that team, I got the sense he has that 
that LeBron Kyrie stuff was Draymond. In fact, LeBron Kyrie stuff. They won one championship. I mean, give me a break. In fact, he was going to be the finals MVP when the Cavs beat him at Oracle had the Cavs not won. So if he go... Yes, he would have been the finals MVP. And, I mean, that's probably one of the strangest occurrences that I've ever seen. A player like Draymond who would have been the finals MVP and ended up being the finals GOAT. He goes down, that's an issue. But it's not an issue like they're going to lose. They got no, no, too no, no, much no, no, talent. No, no, well, that's just, that's just asinine. And the reason why... That, here's the reason why. You're acting like... Where oh, asinine means it's, it's not smart. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, I that's can't exactly what I'm saying. The point, that, the point that I'm saying but is... what that, I said was so that, smart. That, 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 well, it wasn't. But here's the reason. Because you're acting like, all right, it's just one or two games in a series. Mm-hmm. When you spent years talking about how one or two games can decide a series. Absolutely, especially when the teams are relatively evenly matched. At some point in time, you got to make up your mind. Listen to what I'm saying. Draymond Green and Golden State, and, we, and in fairness to you, we disagree on this. So it's not like you don't know what I'm saying. We just disagree. And I got that. I respect that. But listen to what I'm going back to. And I'll ask everybody watching to recall. Draymond Green gets in a tussle with LeBron James in game four three years ago. He goes down to the floor, kicks up his leg, whatever, whatever. Golden State... W- Yo, Steve Kerr, <laughs> that dude ignites. When he gets pissed off, Steve Kerr will let you have it. And don't give a shit who you are or how big you are. Won that game in Cleveland. So it wasn't just that they were up 3-1. They had won game four, which means they were going back to the Oracle with momentum. The NBA gives LeBron that stimulus package. They suspend Draymond Green. That same game, Iguodala and Bogut gets hurt. And they were never the same. So what I'm trying to say to you is, let's not act like one game can't potentially influence a series. Particularly when we see Paul George playing like a league MVP. Russell Westbrook dropping triple doubles like it's going out of style. Go Oklahoma City playing defense the way that it's playing. Houston on the come up. Let me say this as well. OKC recently signed Markeith Morris. That's a great pickup for them. That is a great pickup for them. He's a stretch four that they really, really need because he's going to D up on the defensive end as well. Bring a lot of grit and toughness to that squad. We're looking at a bunch of teams and we're saying, okay, the road to prosperity is not like it was two years ago when KD had first arrived because we knew. That's, remember, I damn near boycotted the NBA. I didn't even want to talk. I didn't want to watch games because I thought it was so unfair that Kevin Durant arrived at the Golden State and they ran through the ball. Well, you're not. But last year was competitive. Well, you're not. And I think this year is going to be competitive as well with under the right circumstances. If Boogie Cousins can give you 20 plus minutes a game, yeah. Drake can be suspended. No team's going to be. And, and that's and a obviously concept. Boogie. That's not quite true. Don't sleep on what Draymond Green brings to that team. It's very common for people to try to poo poo what Draymond brings to that team. What he brings to that team is integral. You're saying that, here's, let me just make sure my point is clear about Boogie Cousins. I believe Boogie Cousins is very formidable, not taking anything away from him. But Boogie Cousins without Draymond Green still leaves the Warriors somewhat potentially vulnerable. Absolutely, especially defensively. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, to the 94-95 to, to the, to the Chicago Bulls, no, they're no, not around. No, no, right. no, I don't believe that. I believe that they, without Draymond Green, Golden State can be had. Really? I would agree with that. Interesting. Again. I don't know. These other teams across the NBA, they've caught up to Golden State. Of course, they have not caught up to them quite in personnel, but just in style of play, and I mentioned this in other videos, certain players come into the NBA that cause a seismic shift in the league. They cause a quantum leap in the style of play. When Magic Johnson came into the NBA, suddenly everybody wanted to go up and down the floor more, more fast breaks, more passing. When Michael Jordan came into the NBA and finally came into prominence in the 90s, that caused many of the two guards and the small forwards that will come into the league in the mid 90s and onward to be more independently driven, focused on being able to score the basketball in a one-on-one situation, trying to dominate the game and utilizing hero ball tactics. That's why after Jordan retired, we saw the influx with Kobe Bryant and Ray Allen and Vince Carter, Paul Pierce, Allen Iverson, so on and so forth, Tracy McGrady, those type of players they all based their style of play and their outlook on the game from watching Jordan. In the early 90s, you had Steve Smith and Penny Hardaway, who was supposed to be the new Magic Johnson. After Steph Curry and what the Warriors have done in the 2015 season, so many teams started to adopt many of, of their practices. When I say their practices, meaning their outlook on the game. 
they allowed their point guards and shooting guards to shoot from 25, 30 feet because they felt like it would spread out the defense. They allowed their four men to make more decisions in a half court set. So of course now the Warriors have to adapt to a team that's playing like them as opposed to catching the league off guard, which is what they did in 2014. Nobody saw what the Warriors did in 2014, 2015 coming, nobody. The previous two years, they were just a fun team to watch with a player in Steph Curry, who I won't say he came out of nowhere because he was dominant as a scorer in college as well. But in the NBA, he'd been so injury riddled that we were not quite sure what he was capable of. So when he finally stepped up in 2012, it was like, okay, this is what this guy can really do. And then 2014, when they bring Steve Kerr on, it's like, wow, this team won 67 games, like 67 games. I'm not sure if there have been 10 teams in the history of the NBA that have won 67 games in a season. So, I mean, we can't poo-poo that. I don't know if Golden State fails that. This is they might be boogie and getting I would, I, would, I would have bet them to lose a series, yeah. but could they? Yeah. I was yes. so hoping. Steph looking as hoping, efficient as ever. I was hoping they were vulnerable this year, but last night proved they're really not. They got five All-Stars. All right, let's keep it. But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see how things go for the Golden State Warriors in the playoffs. So, peace.